Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Rachel from Evelyn and Peter, and today I have a new crochet cardigan pattern to share with you guys. Super excited for this one. This one is going to be joining in my Heartland Cardi collection along with the Stony Shore cardigan and the Kaya cardigan. So I'm gonna stand up so you guys can see. This one is a bit more oversized than the other cardigans, but the same basic style and feel to it, just a lot more oversized for the extra cozy vibes. We have the oversized balloon sleeves with a nice long length so that it doesn't ride up your arm. Um, this one also has pockets just like the other two. Um, don't mind the ends being unweaved. I'm filming this ahead of time before heading out on a family vacation. So she's not all the way done yet. She's also still nameless. So that will have to be added in later, but I am so excited for this one You can find the pattern free on my blog and I will link to that in the description And then it's also going to be a kit available on linebrand.com I will link to that as well and the kit comes with all the yarn you need to make your sweater And then you also get a free copy of the printable PDF um, pattern download. So they will email you a copy to that and you can print it out and you won't have any ads or anything like that in it um, like you would if you were to visit it on my blog. And then you can also change out the yarn colors as well. So they have lots of different pretty colors in the Heartland yarn. Um, so you can swap that out for whichever color you prefer. Um, and then they also uh, have really good sales frequently. So I will let you guys know about the sales. Um, a lot of times they're like 30% off sales and then you get the yarn at a discounted price plus the free copy of the pattern. So it's a really good deal. If you're subscribed to my newsletter, I always try and let you guys know when those really good sales are happening. And I promise I do not spam or give your emails away. I only email to let you guys know when I have a free pattern, a free tutorial, or to let you guys know about um, really good sales. And you guys are always the first to know whenever I drop a new pattern like this one. Um, so other than that, I'll also link to the pattern free on my blog. I recommend following along with that as you go. I'm making the size small in the video, but you will want to um, pull up that written pattern, especially if you're making a different size. Even if you are making a size small, it's always good to have that pattern to make sure your stitch count and your row count and everything like that is on track. Um, and then this is also available on Etsy and Ravelry as well. So that will be the printable PDF pattern um, where it doesn't have the ads. It's a good way to support me. So just go and buy that version. Um, especially if you don't like scrolling through blogs and then and obviously this is the full video tutorial pattern here and I think that is all there is to know about this design again it is oversized so if you want more of a form fitted um, cardigan then I recommend going down in size if you like it to be a little less baggy and a little less loose so other than that I think that was it and I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial and I will catch you guys in the next one so for this design, you're going to need worsted weight yarn. I'm using Lion Brands Heartland in the color Mount Rainier, and all of the exact yardage for all sizes is available on my blog, enpcrochet.com. I recommend heading over there to check out what you need for the size you're going to make. And then you're also going to need a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, a needle to weave in your ends, a pair of scissors, a measuring tape, and a few stitch markers as well. In this design, you can use the pocket as a gauge. So if you haven't already made a gauge swatch, you can jump forward to the portion of this video where we make the pocket panel and you can use that as your gauge swatch. And then you can just go ahead and keep it in instead of pulling it out um, and save it for later when we're sewing on the pockets. But for this portion, I'm going to start off by showing you how to make the back panel and the front panels. All of these panels start off the exact same way. The only difference is we are going to be leaving a hole in the two front panels to create the pocket opening. But other than that, this ribbing is exactly the same on the back panel, both front panels, and on the sleeves. We're just going to be doing a different amount of rows for each one. So to start off, you can just create a slip knot, and then we are going to be working row one of the ribbing. You can either work a foundation single crochet, or you can do a starting chain. I'm going to be doing a foundation single crochet. 
But if you would rather do a starting chain, go ahead and chain 11 and then just work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and across for a total of 10 single crochet stitches. But for the foundation single crochet, you're going to insert your hook into the back bump of that very first chain made, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, pull through both loops, and that is one foundation single crochet. And then on the bottom of that stitch that you just made, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, me, yarn over pull through both loops again insert your hook into the bottom of the stitch that we just made making sure you put it under both of those loops yarn over pull up a loop yarn over pull through the first loop only yarn over pull through two you're just going to continue to do this until you have a total of 10 single crochet stitches you're just putting your hook into the bottom of the previous stitch and working your foundation single crochet so go ahead and work 10 of these or chain 11 and work your 10 single crochet back down that chain for the same amount of stitches. Okay, so now we have a total of 10 single crochet. You're just going to chain one and turn your work. Now we will be working row two. So for this one, we're going to be working one single crochet into that very first stitch, making sure you put your hook under both the front and the back loop. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, and then yarn over, pull through both loops for one single crochet. And then in the next stitch, you're going to be working in the back loop only. So the loop that's closest to you is the front loop. The loop that's furthest away is the back loop. So put your hook in the back loop only and then just work a single crochet stitch like normal. You're going to do this all the way across the row, putting your hook into the back loop only until we get to the very last stitch of the row where we're going to be finishing with a regular single crochet stitch. Okay, so here we are at the last stitch of the row. I'm going to put my hook under both the front and the back loop this time, work my single crochet like normal, and then chain one and turn my work to complete row two. Now for the rest of the ribbing, you're just going to be repeating row two as many times as it calls for for your size. So again, that is just a single crochet in the first stitch and then single crochets in the next eight stitches working in the back loop only and then a single crochet under both the front and back loop for the last stitch of the row and then repeat as many times as you need for the size that you're making. So if you're following along with the written pattern, I have it written out so that you would start with the back panel first. So you can go ahead and create that back panel for the size small that I am working on. The back panel has a total of 84 ribbing rows. So you would just continue to repeat row two until you had a total of 84 rows. But again, that's gonna depend on the size that you're making as well. In this clip here, I am working on the front panel, but I'm going to be going over how to do the back and the front panels um, for this section. So I'll explain how to do all of it here, and they are the exact same, just the ribbing rows are different. So for row one of the main body, this goes for both the back and the front panels, you're going to chain one and then work a single crochet stitch into the end of that very first um, row that we just completed for the ribbing. So you just put your hook in and work a single crochet and then into the end of the second ribbing row, work a single crochet and then into the end of the third ribbing row, work a single crochet. So we're just putting our hook into the ends of each of the ribbing rows all the way across, working one single crochet stitch into each of them. There's not a specific spot to put your hook because you're not working into an actual top of a stitch. You're just working into the ends of the rows so you put wherever it feels most comfortable to you um, and just work one single crochet into the end of each one all the way across when you get to the end of the row your stitch count should be the same as the amount of rows that you have so just make sure you double check that and then you can go ahead and chain one and turn your work and then for row two, we're going to be starting off with a half double crochet. So in that very first stitch, you're gonna yarn over, insert your hook, and then just yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through all three for one half double crochet. And then you're going to be skipping over the next stitch and in the following, work another half double crochet stitch. So we've just skipped over, worked a half double crochet in the next, and now we're going to be working a half double crochet around the post of the stitch that we just made. So yarn over, and then you're going to put your hook into that space, 
and put the post of the stitch on top of your hook and work a half double crochet like normal and then just skip the next stitch insert your hook into the following work a half double crochet and again put your hook into that space working a half double crochet around the post of the stitch that you just made so you insert your hook and your stitch just kind of lays on top of your hook and then you yarn over pull up a loop and yarn over pull through all three you're just going to do this all the way across the row skip a stitch work a half double crochet and then work a half double crochet around the post of the stitch that you just made so it's really simple they're all just half double crochet stitches except when you work it around the post of one of them um, you're not working into an actual stitch you're just working it around the previous stitch so go ahead and repeat all the way across when you have three stitches remaining here i'm going to show you how to finish off this row so in that second to last stitch work a half double crochet like normal and then do not forget to work a half double crochet around the post of that one that you just made and then when you have one stitch remaining just finish with a half double crochet stitch so you want to make sure you don't forget that very last half double crochet and then you can go ahead and chain two and turn your work again your stitch count remains the same here and it won't be changing at all so in the very first stitch, work a double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two for one double crochet stitch. Now we're going to be working into the back loops only for this row. So in the following stitch, you can insert your hook into the back loop only and then work a single crochet. And then in the one after that, put your hook in the back loop only and work a double crochet. And then in the back loop only of the next one, work a single. And we're just going to alternate working double crochet stitches and single crochet stitches all the way across the row so it's only the very first stitch of the row is where you're going under both the front and back loop and then we're also going to finish our last stitch of the row will also be going in the front and back loop so it's only the ones in the middle of that row that are in the back loop only so you can see here i'm going to finish with a single crochet working it into both the front and the back loop this just helps give our work a cleaner edge so we have double crochet and single crochet alternating all the way across and then you can chain two turn your work and you're going to repeat that previous row except this time you're going to be working it under both loops so it's only that very first row in the section where you work in the back loop only so you'll know to work in the back loop only when you have the half double crochet row before it that's the only time you'll be working in the back loop only is when you have a row previous to it that has the half double crochet stitches the rest of the double crochet single crochet rows work under both the front and the back loop go ahead and work your way across chain two turn your work work your way back and then i'll meet you back to show you what to do next okay so you might notice that your panels are widening out a little bit that's completely normal it's because the ribbing rows are tighter and they stretch so if you notice the main body of the panels widening that is completely okay and these last several rows that we did here are what we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the panels that we make for our sweater so the only difference is the rows where we did the double single alternating which is called the lemon peel stitch we're going to be adding in a couple rows in those sections as we continue on with the panel so when you look at the sweater the um, sections are smaller and then as you go further up it gets wider and wider widening out the amount of rows where we um, do the half double crochet to kind of give it a, a faded look into having like thicker stripes make sure you're paying attention to the written pattern so you can see how many rows of that lemon peel that you need here we have three rows of it and the next couple sections will also be three but then in the couple sections after that it will be five and then after that it will be seven and then finally ending with nine rows of it so just make sure you pay attention um, to know when we add in those extra rows so now you're going to turn your work chain one and just repeat row two which is the half double crochet row work a half double crochet crochet in the first skip a stitch work a half double crochet in the following and then work a half double crochet around the post that you just made and then after you create that row you're going to do three rows of the lemon peel making sure that very first row of it is worked into the back loop only and then the following two into both loops so just make sure you remember that as well so for the next several rows rows 6 through 14 you're going to be repeating rows 2 through 5 
So go ahead and repeat two through five two more times and then you'll be doing one more row to repeat and you will have a total of 14 rows like I do here and then in the 15th row we'll be adding the pocket. So if you're working on the back panel right now, you're just going to ignore the instructions on how to add the pocket in and keep going to lengthen out your back panel piece. And for the front panels, I will show you how to add in the pocket hole, which is really, really simple. First, I'm going to show you what your back panel will look like. So the rows that we just did is are what we're going to be repeating um, throughout the rest of the pattern. You can see how it kind of fades into thicker rows. So we have the rows where we only have three rows of lemon peel, and then you can see I have two more added in here. So this section has five rows of the lemon peel. And then same with the next two sections, five rows, five rows, and then you can see it widens out again. And we have seven rows of the lemon peel and then another seven rows of the lemon peel. And then this last section has nine rows of it. So it goes three, 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 five, 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 seven, seven, nine. So make sure you're following along with the written pattern so you know how many rows to add in. And then of course, in between each of those sections is the half double crochet row. So you're just going to keep going and doing what, exactly what we did and just widening out those sections, adding in a couple more rows for it. And for the size small, I am making a total of 57 rows for the size small and the back panel. So rows one through 57 total and then um, you can fasten off that back panel. And for the front panel, it will be the same exact length. We're just going to add in a pocket hole. So if you're working on the back panel now, I recommend just pausing the video, going and finishing the back panel, and then you can come back and start your front panels, and I will show you how to add in the hole in this section here. Again, all of the panels start off the exact same way, so if you need to, you can go back and re-watch this portion to see to remember how to start off each panel. So now for the front panels, I am on row 15 here, and we're going to be adding in the section to the opening of the pocket. So we're gonna start off our row the exact same way. You can chain two and then that very first stitch work a double crochet. And then you're going to be working a single crochet into the next one in the back loop only. And just do our regular double crochet, single crochet repeat. But this time you're only going to do it for a total of eight stitches. Again, depending on what size you're making, it will be a different stitch count. So if you're making the same size as me, it will be eight stitches, but if it's different, it'll be either slightly more or slightly less depending on the size. So make sure you check that in the written pattern. So I'm going to have a total of eight stitches here, and then we are going to create the opening with a chain. I also wanted to point out in the video in this last stitch that I did, that eighth stitch, I did work it in the back loop only here, but if I were to redo it again, I would probably do it under both the front and the back loop just because I noticed it stretched um, at that stitch a little bit and tugged it up a little bit more than what I wanted. It doesn't ruin the project if you do it in the back loop only, but I thought I would just give this little hint to anyone else that it might look a little bit better if you do it under both the front and the back loop for that eighth stitch there. Same with this stitch on the other side where the stitch marker is where you join in. You can do it under both the front and the back loop only, but it doesn't matter if you do it the back loop only. Either way it works. So after you work those stitches, go ahead and chain 20, and then we're going to be skipping over the next 20 stitches from the row. You can see I placed the stitch marker into the eighth stitch from the end of the row on the other side because we want both sides to have the same amount of stitches. So we have eight stitches, chain 20, skip 20, and then we're going to finish with eight stitches and join in where we place that stitch marker. You also wanna make sure that you're joining in with the correct stitch. Again, these lemon peel rows always end on a single crochet. So you wanna make sure you're still ending on a single crochet in this row as well. So make sure when you join in, you're joining in with a double crochet. 
And then continue on with the repeat working single, double, single, all the way until you get to the end where you finish that row with a single crochet in both of the loops. Again, you can see I joined in with a double crochet in the back loop only, but you can join in with a double crochet under both loops to make it a little bit more secure of a stitch. So just finish off this row with a single crochet under both of the loops and then that completes our pocket opening here. So when we work our following row, you're going to be working into the chains um, just like normal as you would with any other stitch. Just treat the chain as the top of a stitch um, and continue on with the same row repeats. So you can go ahead and chain two and turn your work. And then now you're just going to be doing your, a normal lemon peel row, which is double crochet and then single crochet all the way across. And I will show you how to work it into the chains as well. Okay, so when you get to the chain, just work into the chain with your regular stitch, treating it just like you would any normal stitch. So you can see here, I'm putting my hook into the very first chain there. And then I'm just going to work my double crochet stitch as normal. And you're going to do this with each of the chains across. So in the next one, work a single and then just continue with the double single repeat all the way across and then continue on with the um, lemon peel row for the next row as well. And then just continue with the regular row repeat. So this is what your front panel will look like after completing that row. And this is the front of the panel and we will be adding in the pocket panel later on and finish sewing it shut. Um, and now you just have to repeat the rows that we just did. So this is exactly like the back panel. Now you just keep going, repeating the sections. So we have three sections with three rows of the lemon peel, three sections with five rows of the lemon peel, two sections with seven rows of the lemon peel and then one and the final section is nine rows of lemon peel. So continue repeating the same exact thing with the half double crochet rows in between until you finish off the front panel. So it's exactly like the back panel. Um, we just have that little hole added for the pocket. So other than that, they should look exactly the same and then go back and make a second front panel and then we will create the sleeves. So again, the sleeves are exactly the same. If you need to go back and rewatch how to do the ribbing, you can go ahead and do that at the very beginning of the video. Work 10 foundation single crochet, and then work your ribbing rows, which is the single crochet into the first stitch, the single crochet in the back loop only across until you reach the last stitch where you finish with a single crochet. Chain one, turn and repeat row two as many times as required for your size. So go ahead and do that for the very first cuff of the sleeve and then I will show you how to continue on um, with the sleeve. There is a slight difference in the very first row of the sleeves. So I will show you how to do that here. Okay, so I have 28 rows, a four size small to create the sleeve cuffs. And now for the very first row here, we're going to be doubling the stitch count to create the balloon shaped sleeves. So to do that, we're just going to be working two single crochet into the ends of each rows instead of one. So chain one and into the end of that very first row, the one that you just finished, you're going to be working a single crochet stitch and now work a second single crochet into that same spot. And then into the second row, work a single crochet and work a second one into that very same spot. Again, for the third one, work a single crochet and then another single crochet into that very same stitch. So basically we're doing the same exact thing that we did on the back panel and the front panels, except we're working two single crochet stitches into the end of each row instead of one single crochet stitch into the end of the row. So just go ahead and work two single crochet into the end of each row all the way across to create the cuff and start the sleeve. Okay, so this is what your sleeve will look like. It's gonna look all wavy and crazy. It's supposed to look like that, so don't worry if yours looks exactly like this. It's 
how it's supposed to be. And now the rest of the sleeve is exactly like the rest of the panels. So you can turn your work, chain one, work a half double crochet in that first spot, skip one, work a half double crochet into the following, and then work your half double crochet around the post of the one that you just made, repeating all the way across. Um, so it's literally exactly like the back panel, exactly like the front panels. Um, that very first row was the only difference in that we were doubling the stitch count there. So other than that, it's exactly the same. You can go back and rewatch the video if you need to, or if you already have it memorized, you can just keep going until um, you have the uh, right amount of rows of sleeves. The sleeves will be shorter than the front and the back panels, so you won't have as many of the um, lemon peel rows that we have on the front and back panels it stops before it gets um, as long as that so just make sure you're paying attention to the written pattern and your size and then depending on what size you make you'll have a different amount of rows as well and if you are making a larger size your sleeve will be shorter and if you are making a smaller size your sleeve will be a bit longer just because of the drop sleeve style that um, is created in this pattern the seam fits lower down your bicep so you don't need the sleeves as long so if they look too short to you then that might be why if you're not used to this kind of style so go ahead and continue on with your regular row repeats for the sleeve and you need to go back and make a second one as well for the size small that i'm making i will have a total of 39 rows for the sleeve Next, we need to make the panels for the pockets. If you are skipping ahead, like I said in the beginning of the video, to create your gauge swatch, then you can follow along here. To make that, make sure you're on track for your size. You can either chain 23, work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and back down for a total of 22 single crochet, or you can work a foundation single crochet like I am doing here. So for that, you're going to chain two, insert your hook into the back bump, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first loop only, yarn over, over pull through two again insert your hook into the bottom of that stitch you just made and continue working your foundation single crochet stitch insert your hook put it under both the front and the back loop yarn over pull up loop yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two when we're just working up a row of foundation single crochet stitches again if you need it slower you can watch from the beginning of the video where i did it or you can head to my um, YouTube page where I have a much slower video on doing the foundation single crochet. If you don't want to do the foundation, just chain 23 and make sure you end up with 22 single crochet stitches here. And then chain two and turn your work. And now we're just going to be working the lemon peel stitch throughout this um, gauge swatch slash pocket that we're making. So in that very first stitch, work a double crochet. And then in the next stitch, work a single crochet. And then we're just going to repeat that across working a double crochet, then a single crochet, then a double crochet, repeating all the way across the row. You start with a double crochet on each of these rows and you end with a single crochet on each of these rows. So just chain two, double crochet, single crochet, repeat across. When you get to the end of the row, you can chain two, turn your work, and repeat that same exact thing. And we're just going to do that and work it all the way up until we have a total of 17 rows for this pocket panel. You have one made you're going to need to make a second one exactly the same so you can do that as well um, so just go ahead and repeat row two until you have a total of 17 rows and then I will meet you back here okay so this is what your pocket panel should look like we have a total of 17 rows you can go ahead and fasten off when you cut your yarn make sure you leave a long enough tail to sew all four sides of this panel to the inside of your cardigan um, and then if you're using this as a gauge swatch you can block it I just do a light steam block on mine and then you can measure within this pocket panel um, to make sure your gauge is correct before you move on to creating the entire sweater and then you can go ahead and make a second one if you haven't already so once you have both of these made I will show you how to seam all of the panels together and add in the pockets as well 
Okay, so at this point you should have back panel, both front panels, and both sleeves and both pockets created. We're now going to seam the shoulders together. You need to place your back panel out in front of you with the right side facing up. You know it's the right side because that is where the little ridge is from that half double crochet row. And then take your front panels and place them right sides facing down um, on top of the back panel. So right sides are facing, and now we're just going to seam across here. I'm using my hook and the tail of yarn from the front panel to slip stitch across but you could also just use a needle and sew across I know people have different preferences for seaming their panels together um, so if you like to use your needle you can do that as well it does not matter as long as you get them joined together so we're just going to be working from this corner here and the very edge stitch all the way across until we reach that last um, stitch of the front panel and then you just need to repeat the same thing on the other side. So work through every stitch of the front panel, making sure you're not skipping any or anything like that on the back panel, and then line it up again and count in the correct amount of stitches on the back panel, the amount that you have on the front, join in and sew across. So just do that on both sides. And then after that, we need to attach our sleeves here. So I have my back panel and my front panel joined, and now I have the sleeve um, flush up against the back and front panel the center shoulder seam here is exactly in the middle of the sleeve panel so you want to make sure you have the same amount of stitches on both sides here so that it's nice and even so just make sure that shoulder seam is in the center of the sleeve panel when you join it in I like to use stitch markers to hold everything in place so you just want to lay it all out flat, make sure nothing is bunched up, and then you can count um, the stitches on your sleeve, and then when it's at the halfway point, you can add a stitch marker at that spot, and then add it into that center shoulder seam, and then just make sure you're adding in and joining the stitch marker at the same spot on the back and the front panel. So it's really easy to line it up and do with this sweater because um, you can see exactly where you're at. That half double crochet row gives us a nice little indicator of um, where to place the stitch marker. And then it doesn't matter where you join it in as long as it's even and at the same spot on both sides. And then you're going to do the same exact process that we did at the shoulders. Use the tail of yarn that you have on your sleeve and just sew it across. So you can either slip stitch across or you can use your needle and use whichever um, sewing method you prefer to join it in. So this is what it looks like using your hook. I've just got the tail of yarn on my sleeve and I'm slip, slip stitching across just like at the shoulder. And since you're working it into the sides of the um, panels on the front and the back, you're not working it into an actual stitch. You're just putting your hook into the sides and the ends of the rows. So you can just pick up whatever loop. There's no specific spot you need to be doing it. Um, just evenly work it across and as long as you have those stitch markers there it'll help keep everything in place so that you can make sure your sleeve is even as you join so go ahead and do that and then repeat the same exact thing on the other side as well and then once you have your sleeves sewn in, you need to seam um, the sleeve and the side as well. So you can join in at the cuff of your sleeve and then just sew all the way to the underarm and from the underarm down the side to the bottom ribbing of your sweater. So you can do the same process as you did before. You can either use your hook and slip stitch to join or you can use your needle and sew it together. Um, just make sure as you go that your stuff is nice and even you can use that half double crochet row as a marker to see where you're at and to make sure that everything is nice and lined up and then you can repeat the same process on the other side so once you seam the sleeve and the side go ahead and do it on the other side of the sweater as well okay so once your sweater is sewn together now we need to add in the pocket panels so I have my pocket placed here my sweater is inside out right now so the wrong side is facing me you want this pocket panel to be on the inside of your cardigan not the outside and then I've just pinned it in place I have row one at the bottom here is lined up with row one of the panel just above the ribbing and then I have placed um, the stitch marker up at the upper corner here um, and then on the bottom corners as well 
That way it will keep everything in place as we sew. And for this part, you're definitely gonna wanna use a needle. You cannot slip stitch it here. So you can use your needle and we're just gonna sew all four sides of the pocket down um, onto the front panel. When you're sewing, it's very important on the top here to not connect it to this portion. You want to sew it to the row above the hole, not the row below the hole right here. You wanna leave that open for the pocket opening. You wanna sew it up here on the top, joining it in so that the hole on the front is still open. If you accidentally seam it on the wrong spot, you'll be left with a weird hole in your sweater and no opening for your hand. So just make sure you pay close attention, make sure you're joining it into the right spot. Um, I'm just gonna use my needle and put that through the very first stitch of the corner and then pick up my sweater here and insert my needle into the stitch of the, uh, to the row above into one of the stitches. The pocket is slightly bigger than the opening. We only skipped 20 stitches, but our pocket is 22 stitches wide. That way um, it covers up the hole nice and evenly. And then you're just gonna sew all the way across the top and then all the way down the left side, and then all the way across the bottom, and then up the final side. So you're just going to use your needle and do that on all four sides of the pocket. Okay, so then you need to do the same thing on the other side, making sure both pockets are seamed in. And now we just need to add the trim of the cardigan. So this part is super easy. You're just gonna take a new piece of yarn and then we're going to be working single crochet stitches around the opening here. So with your cardigan right side out, you're going to join in at the bottom, work your single crochet stitches up the side, across the back neckline and down at the other side to the opposite corner over here. So go ahead and take your yarn, insert it into that very corner stitch of the ribbing row, and make sure you put it through both the front and the back loop, and then just join in with a slip stitch. So just yarn over and pull through, and then go ahead and chain one, and in that very same stitch, you're going to work a single crochet. So insert your hook, work a single crochet stitch, and then work a single crochet stitch in all of the rest of those stitches in the ribbing. And then when you work, when you reach that main body of the front panel, you can continue working single crochet stitches. Um, because there's no stitch that you're working it into, you're just working it into the ends of the rows. There's no specific spot to put your hook. All you wanna do is make sure you're evenly placing the stitches. So if you feel like it looks weird or that the single crochet stitches are too spaced apart, you can pull it back out and um, fix it and just place them a little bit closer together. Or if it's very important that you do not have too many stitches close together because it ends up making your work look wavy and weird. So just make sure you place them evenly and try and um, not put too many too close together. You'll notice if it is because your work will start waving kind of like it did with the sleeve. So just make sure you evenly place it, work all the way up across the back neckline down to the other side. When you reach the bottom corner, you're just going to chain one and turn your work. And then we're going to finish our last row here. So for this row, we're going to be working our stitches into the front loop only. So for the first stitch, you can put it under both the front and the back loop, working a regular single crochet. And then in the rest of the stitches, you can put it in the front loop only, which is the loop closest to you. So we're used to putting it in the back loop only. This time we're gonna put it in the front loop, which is the one closest to us, and then just work a single crochet like normal. We're gonna do this all the way back up the front panel, across the back neckline, and down the other side. When you get to the end of the row, you can just finish with a single crochet in the last stitch and then fasten off your work and then after that just weave in any remaining ends you might have with your needle and that is it for this design i hope you guys enjoyed this pattern thank you so much for watching and i will catch you in the next video tutorial